Joe Blasco here on MUATV.com's Who Is. Today we have Kevin Haney. And uh, Kevin, let's get back to where we did the cleanup thing there, and you gave us your recommendations for cleanup. We did mention that you're going to be coming to Florida. That was the last thing we talked about. <laughs> that he is going to be coming to Florida for a, a forced vacation to do some makeup <laughs> for us at our studio there in Orlando. Um, let's um, let's talk about Dick Tracy a little more. Mm -hmm. uh, you said Venia was there, and and you did a lot of the character makeups. Um, in, uh, in supervised, yeah, you super, you, oh, you supervised the character makeups. Yeah, I did Edo Ross. Edo Ross was the uh, Redo Ross and Paul Servino were the two makeups that I did. I may have also done the brow, but uh, John and Doug, you know, would do a lot of. Greg Canham came in to yes. do a character, and V, as I said, was like point set person, very influent, you know, very important. It was also, if I'm not mistaken, the very first film to use a cleanup crew. Which is now uh, it's, it's very it's, it's become standard. It's standard, yeah. but it was John and Doug's brilliant idea. Right, right, to have idea, yeah. a second, to bring in a second wave crew to come in because they, you know, they're they're fresh and they're not tired. Uh, you, know, you you have a crew of makeup artists who've been working all day, 12, 14 hours, whatever it may be. You know, it's you let them go, let them go. They've done their their duty. They, they come pay back their fresh dues. The next day. They come fresh the next day, uh, and you bring in a second crew to do cleanup, which is I think is brilliant. Uh, the Adams family. Uh, we talked about that briefly. Give us a story, something you remember, something that really stood out when you were working that film that you. The first you Adams enjoyed. family. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was pretty boring on that one. <laughs> uh, pretty boring. I, I, I do remember that uh, I got to bring in Matthew to help with uh, Bald Cap on uh, Matthew Mungle. Pugsley, Matthew One of my Mungle. graduates, Matthew Mungle. Uh, that was where I met yeah. Matthew yes. uh, on set. But I remember they talked about Paramount was so upset that the show was going over uh, that they said that uh, uh, we're going to come back, we're going to edit it together and see what what we have and then we're going to do reshoots and I said excuse me but you know Chris is shaving his head there's no guarantee that when he comes back that he's going to be able to shave his head I think we better do a cast of his of his of his shaved head yes. so that we can make a proper full cap. latex cap yes. at least Custom for the back of the cap. yeah yes. and sure enough when they came back Chris couldn't uh, do it so yeah. We intercut between this foam latex uh, uh, yes. piece and uh, you know his actual shaved head. Yes, that's the only thing I can. Well, really you, think you, of. you can't. Yeah, I mean, there was they were identical. You know, between the two. Let's let's uh, talk about one of my favorites, and I'm sure the, a favorite of many many people out there, and that is. Death Becomes Her. Ah. Now here is a film. I mean, this is a film that is a makeup, CGI, just a dream Well, they film. didn't have CGI then. But that the, was all was, done optically. It was done optically. They started, they started doing CGI. That was, it was one of the first things. And but this was done green screen or blue screen? Blue, blue screen. Yes. Uh, we were doing, actually it was very early in it. And, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a complicated story because everybody, there were a lot of people involved in it. Uh, Dick got the job originally and Dick wanted the consultant and then he said Kevin Haney's going to be your, you know, he's going to be my I'm going to I'm going to be the the it's going to be really his film but I'm going to be directing him and acting as senior advisor. Yes. Uh, between Dick and myself, we chose who would work on it, really, yes. is from the makeup department. Yes. We handpicked Lance and David Anderson. Yes. We saw a lot of people, yeah. went around to a lot of shops, and I, you know, Dick, Dick and I chose them to help us. Who uh, applied the, the, uh, the, the makeup that was done on Meryl Streep when her that head would, is That would be me. <laughs> that would be, that would be me. Uh, I was responsible for Meryl Streep. I had Mike Mills doing, uh, uh, applying uh, Bruce Willis's makeup, yes. uh, and Lance and David applied Goldie Hawn's uh, fat makeup. And yes. Lance 
uh, was basically designed. Yes. Uh, uh, the facial appliances and me and David Anderson uh, sculpted the body. It's a real Greg makeup Smith. picture. It's, it's fascinating. It, you were nominated for an Oscar for that film. Were no, you we not? were not. You were not. No, no, it won for visual effects. I see. But I see. it didn't make it. Uh, it didn't make it. The people had just they had just given an award to Terminator, yes. and people were dismayed when they found out that there were a lot of visual effects in it. Uh, in Terminator, and they said, "Well, we can't do that again, so yes. we're not going to nominate it." Yes. And in all fairness, I didn't, I didn't do a very hard job of uh, promoting, promoting it, but it, yeah. uh, it 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 could have, but it did win. Uh, we also to what was, degree? Excuse me. What to what degree? You you just brought something up here. He says you didn't. He said he didn't do a very hard job in, of promoting it. Tell our audience worldwide how you have to promote yourself. When you wish to be nominated for an award, uh, there are those instances. This is a touchy thing because I don't, I don't tend to do it as much as other people. But let's say you work on a film, and you think it might be Oscar worthy. Yes. Take pictures, have behind the scene pictures, make a book, make a nice book. You're not judged on that. But ultimately, you're going to be judged on what's on film. Yes. And what's on film is the final say. Right. But I know of many films that would never have made it to the final cut. You know, for instance, the brilliant work that was done on Cinderella Man, uh, nobody knew what was in that film. And until David Anderson brought in the book of the noses and the fighters' noses yes. and all the cuts and bruises yes. and the fact that they had done all this stuff, yes. people went, oh, well, that's a lot of stuff. Yes, because right. the problem with our work is that when it's brilliant, you don't it's know invisible. It. That's right. That, that reminds me of something, and you'll remember this reading Richard Corson's book. Do you remember in the back? In the conclusion of the book, it, he states, a makeup that calls attention to itself mm -hmm. Is not a good makeup. Yeah, it's yeah. like an actor who cannot do his own makeup is an artistic cripple. Do you remember those? <laughs> do you remember those? Anyway, you know what? We're going to pick up on this in just one second. Uh, don't go away. We'll be right back. We have to do a, uh, a tape change. All right. <laughs> 